everyone in this lecture today i'm going to talk to you about restriction fragment length polymorphism rflp so rflp restriction fragment length it refers to the length of restriction fragment and polymorphism it means okay many forms poly means many poly means many and morph means form okay so in simple words, the meaning of restriction fragment length polymorphism is the many forms of the restriction fragment length. So what is RFLP? RFLP, RFLP stands for restriction fragment length polymorphism. Then what is a restriction fragment? A restriction fragment is a piece of a DNA that is cut from the larger DNA molecule by a restriction enzyme. Okay, so let's say that we have here this larger DNA molecule. We use a suitable restriction enzyme. This suitable restriction enzyme recognizes its restriction site. And in this case, one restriction site, and then cuts this particular DNA molecule into two fragments here is shown here. So these fragments, this fragment here and this fragment here, they are called restriction fragments. So the polymorphisms, they are determined by the number. Polymorphisms are determined by the number and the varying lengths of these DNA fragments, okay? Polymorphism are determined by the number and the varying lengths of these DNA fragments. So RFLP is a type of polymorphism that results from the variation in the DNA sequence recognized by restriction enzyme. Here's an example. Let's say that we have here a DNA sample, iso a DNA isolated from this particular sample. So then we use suitable restriction enzyme. That suitable restriction enzyme recognizes its restriction site, which is uh, one restriction site, and we cuts this particular DNA the molecule into two fragments. Okay, For, so basically from here, when you when we use restriction enzyme. Let's say that any restriction enzyme that recognizes specific this restriction site and then cuts this particular DNA molecule into two fragments. And for the another sample, so what we do, we isolate the DNA molecule from this sample. And in this case, this particular restriction enzyme recognizes its two of its restriction site uh, present in this particular DNA molecule and cuts this particular DNA molecule into three fragments. Okay. So what we know is that, okay, from the, for, for the DNA sample from this particular, uh, we have two fragments, whereas for the DNA sample from this particular person, we have three fragments. So uh, this indicates that this, uh, when we compare these into the, the positive controls, then we know that, okay, this particular DNA sample is coming from this person because here we have two fragments, uh, whereas this particular DNA sample is, is, is this particular DNA sample is coming from this person because here we have uh, three fragments. So how we will know? We will we will know because we will also uh, use the positive control. Okay, uh, positive control uh, here in this case will be the DNA from this person, and the positive control in this case will be DNA from this person. Uh, restriction fragment length polymorphism is used in DNA fingerprinting, uh, paternity, and genetic diversity. What are the steps involved in restriction fragment length polymorphism? The first step in the restriction fragment length, length polymorphism is the isolation of DNA sample. So isolation of the DNA from the sample. Okay, we have, uh, we know now we have isolated the DNA uh, from this particular sample. DNA extraction is the first step. The next step is the restriction digestion. Let's say that after isolating the DNA sample, we use suitable restriction enzyme and that suitable restriction enzyme recognizes its restriction site and cuts the DNA molecule into two fragments as shown here. And for the another sample, let's say that we use the same restriction enzyme and the, the, the same restriction enzyme recognizes its two of, two of its restriction site present in the DNA sample and then cuts this particular DNA sample into three fragments. After the restriction digestion, the next step in RFLP is the agarose gel electrophoresis. So what we do, we load uh, the restriction digest, okay? We load the restriction digest in, 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 in the gel and they run agarose gel electrophoresis. As you can see that here, we have two fragments. Okay, here we have two fragments 
and here we have three fragments. So these two fragments, they are coming from this particular sample, whereas three fra these three fragments, they are coming from this particular sample. And if we had also loaded the positive control, let's say that we also loaded positive control uh, and the positive control shows three fragments uh, f you know, f f from this person and another positive control shows two fragments from this person. So then we know that, okay, this particular DNA sample uh, is coming from the, this person and this particular DNA sample is coming from this person. So for that, we have to load the positive control. And finally, what are the advantages and disadvantages of restriction fragment length polymorphism? Uh, restriction fragment length polymorphism is highly reproducible and simple method. But one of the drawback of this method is that even if the bending part patterns are same, it does not always mean that the two population are identical because sometimes even within the different population and the size of the restriction fragments generate, generated, size of the restriction fragment generated uh, by using the same restriction uh, enzymes may be identical. That's why a uh, same bending, bending patterns does not always mean that the two population are identical. In those cases, we have to perform a sequencing analysis. Thank you very much.